Okay, so about, uh, about Champagne and Champagne Boulanger. As you all know, Champagne, and especially Champagne Boulanger, is a luxury product. Being, being a luxury product means excellence and also means exemplary. Climate change is one of the subjects, an obvious one for today. We must be an example on. This subject is not new for Champagne, as we were the first area in the wine business to realize how serious the situation is. Champagne achieved its first carbon footprint in 2003, and then, of course, deployed a plan to improve it. From the beginning, we know that there are two sides to this plan. A long-term orientation focused on mitigation. For me, it's the most important one, because if we lose this battle, a potential scientific scenario would be the Gulf Stream disappearance, meaning we are 100 meters of ice in Champagne. Or another scenario could be a temperature rise by five degrees Celsius, meaning again for Champagne that will live in a desert. And adaptation in that case will not be a subject anymore. We all want to believe that this will not happen, so we also work on short-term, medium-term orientation, adaptation, focused on preserving our terroir, our vineyards, as well as the typicity and the style of our wines. Let's talk about what we do in Boulanger Vineyards to mitigate climate change. But before that, you must realize that today, there is still a lot of people, even in Champagne, who don't believe that global warming is a fact. I know that you are all aware of that, but three simple figures concerning Champagne speak better than a long story. The average temperature raised by 1.2 degrees Celsius within the last 30 years, 2018, is the hottest year ever recorded in Champagne. Harvest time took place 18 days earlier. We started to peak in August in 2003, 2007, 2011, 2017, 2018. The only time before that was in 1893. We have today the Huglin Index of Bordeaux 30 years ago. We all agree that the main part to minimize the outcome of climate change is to lower the greenhouse gases emission. I'm not talking only about carbon dioxide, but this gas is the main one and mostly due to our consumption of fossil energies. There are two ways to achieve that. A direct way is to work on our energy and try to decrease the consumption of fossil energy, like fuel petrol. We can switch energies and move to re renewable ones. Boulanger was one, one of the first maisons to invest in electric tractors. The electric tractors use is great for France, because our country nearly does not use any fossil energy to produce electricity, but unfortunately, not relevant for a worldwide scale. We are also working on new kinds of energy changes, but all that will take time, and we have to be very reactive. The other way is to save energy. We use tractors being multitask, and so reducing the number of actions. It's an all-in-one all in work, decreasing the numbers of passages. That clearly means time saving, energy savings, and cost saving as well. And it's always interesting for CEO. We mainly work with local partners. It's a daily short distribution, circuit, and service, always in the same orientation. Time saving, energy saving, input saving. Also, Boulanger stopped a long time ago using petrol to protect the vineyards from spring frosts. A second way, less direct, but probably more important in vineyards, is to reduce inputs. About fertilizer and herbicides, of course, 
in Bollinger, all the wood coming from Bollinger vineyards during pruning will stay in Bollinger vineyards and be used as a source of carbon and nitrogen by shredding, literally, voyage. Boulanger is also very soil preservation oriented. That's why we decided to stop uh, fertilization for five years starting in 2008 and change after that to a reason used of only organic fertilizer. As we know that mineral fertilizer can produce a very strong greenhouse gas named nitrous oxide. Oxide. Since 2016, I'm really proud, I'm really proud of my team too, to tell you that Boulanger has also been a zero herbicide company and that all the soils of our vineyards are worked by mechanical weeding. weeding. About insecticides, acaricide, Boulanger hasn't used any of these products for the past 10 years and is promoting biocontrol products. For example, to fight specific butterflies, we use pheromones in a strategy called sexual confusion. If we have time for, for question, Jose, I, I, I will give some more information about sexual confusion. Finally, about fungicides, the good way to state Boulanger commitments is to follow the EFT, Indice de Fréquence de Traitement. That means the average number of treatments per year. We moved from 22 treatments in 2008 to 14 treatments in 2018. That is to say, a 35% decrease. The goal is to reach only 11 treatments by 2025, minus 50%. And we are very confident in achieving this objective. On a more global scale, Boulanger was one of the first companies to do its carbon footprint overview in 2010, and then another one in 2015, showing a global decrease of the carbon footprint by 18% per bottle. We will work on an update in 2020, and maybe I'll come back to you, not by plan, but by Skype, we'll see. We have seen the first side, which is mitigation. Let's turn to the second side, adaptation. Back to the effect of climate change, within the last 30 years, we have seen what happened for temperature for harvest start. The yield and the analysis of the grapes have changed too. From 9% natural alcohol in the 90s to 10% now, even higher in 2018, from nine grams per liter total acidity in the 90s to less than eight grams now, even lower in 2018, while the yields are moving up quickly. So one of the main goals, and this is gonna be my focus for Boulanger and for Champagne, is to keep our typicity and to preserve the freshness of our wines. How can we do that? By increasing mechanical works of the soil, we suppress superficial roots and we dry the wines to go deeper into the soil to collect its proper nutrients, being then stronger to react to any weather condition, accumulate less potassium, so giving more acidic grapes. The climate change decreases the acidity rate, but by counterbalancing this consequence, we are able to increase it naturally. We also reintroduced old grape varieties, what we call in Champagne the forgotten ones, so fashionable today but already worked at Boulanger since 2010. In 2018, as you can see, the acidity represented by the pH is much more interesting for Petit Meulier and Arban, and will provide new possible choices in the future blends for Boulanger. The choice of rootstocks is also very important. Of course, we are trying to get the latest rootstocks, especially adapted to our soil, so that the grapes can ripen in cooler condition in September instead of August. 
We are working on specific clones or mass cell selections that can produce wines with more acid. A way to get more freshness is also to choose more productive varieties that will get ripe with a lower amount of sugar and higher acidity. In Champagne, we've been experimenting large vines plantation for more than 30 years, and we know that it's a good way to save energy, to reduce inputs, and to get grapes with higher acidity too. And finally, to prepare the future, we have recently decided to experiment new varieties that could be resistant to diseases and maybe, hopefully, preserve the acidity of the grapes. Of course, we can also work on the date of harvest, the time we pick the grapes, early morning, night, the choice of the first juices coming from the press, and then make some choices during the winemaking process. Many options are open for Boulanger in the future, like fermenting more in oak barrels, not undergoing the malolactic fermentation, use less sugar in the liqueur de dosage. But we are entering into a new field, and it's not really a real subject for today. To conclude, and to make short now, all these tools we have makes us very confident in our ability to adapt at least until 2050. But as I said at the beginning of my presentation, the real challenge is to keep global warming under control. And to do so, the main tool is to reduce the emission of greenhouse gases. Of course, we have to work in the vineyard, but if you look carefully to our carbon footprint, you notice that growing grapes is less than 20% of the print of champagne business. Our ambition to reduce by four our emission of greenhouse gases will only be achieved if we reduce by the same factor any input directly linked or not to our activity. That means packaging, transport, and so on and so forth. Our challenge is to reduce any item in or around champagne production, and Boulanger is already in the place. Champagne and Champagne Boulanger did, have done, still do, and will do the best to consider or reconsider in its strategy or orientation to remain exemplary and to promote a policy of excellence. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>